Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about the 12 books that I have read so far in May. I've had a fantastic reading month so far. Most of my reads are either four stars or higher. Most of them are so far. So uh, knock on wood that um, they stay that way for the rest of the month because I'm having a great Ray May so far. So the first two books that I would love to mention are these two novellas. This is Swapped Bride and Mistlefoe. These two were books that I read for the novella-a-thon. That vlog will be linked down below if you want to know my thoughts and what these two books are about. But these were the last two books I read for the novella-a-thon that bled into May because the readathon ended I believe on May 1st if I'm not mistaken. So I read both of these on May 1st. So if you want to know my thoughts on those books, you can go check out that reading vlog or my Goodreads reviews, whatever you want to do. I've just already reviewed these books on my channel. The next book that I'm going to mention is a book that I started during the novella-a-thon, but I didn't finish it, so it's not in that vlog. This is Scandalous Passions by Nicola Davidson. I read quite a few Nicola Davidson books for the novella-a-thon towards the end of April, so I needed to pick up another audiobook during the novella-a-thon, but I didn't finish this one in that week time period. And tell me why this 150 page book was like six hours on audio I don't that does not compute for me anyway um this is an MFF historical and it was fun it was a grand old time I ended up just giving it three stars it was okay I felt like it was too long like for it being 150 pages it was a little too long and even with the feeling of it being too long, there wasn't enough development in a few instances for me. So basically the King of England at this time, I can't remember which king it is, um, that one of the heroines in here is his ex-mistress and the other heroine is his ward. So like he's not blood related to her, but he's like in charge of taking care of her. He sends both of the women away to this house and his like right hand man bodyguard goes with them and it's their romance in this house secluded together. So. Yeah, it was a fun read. It just was like, okay, it was okay. I read other fantastic Nicola Davidson books before I read this one. So it was just like, fine. Next, I have to mention Twisted Games by Anna Huang. I finally read this book. So many people have been telling me to read this book because it's a royalty romance. And y'all know I am a huge sucker for a royalty romance trope. I'm in love with it. So um, this book gives a lot of vibes of Princess Diaries, Royal Engagement, so number two. Our heroine here, Bridget, she's a princess who now is in line to take the throne. Um, but there's this law, marriage law thing, where she's only able to marry uh, someone with a title. And a lot of people in parliament, or whole parliament, wants Bridget to be married before she's crowned queen. So this is like her trying to find her husband, but then also this is her romance with her bodyguard, Reese. <laughs> um, it starts out before book number one in the series takes place, Twisted Love. So you get to see Reese in Twisted Love, but this book kind of like jumps backwards to when he starts working with Bridget and like their animosity rivaling friendship to lovers. This book is chock full of like forbiddenness because they're having to keep their relationship a secret, obviously because she's not supposed to be with her bodyguard. So um, I love a good forbidden trope. I thought this was a grand old read, a grand old time. This one did really remind me of Princess Diaries to a Royal Engagement. So the marketing for that I think was spot on because it really reminded me of that. I really loved how Bridget in here, you got to see her whole development of becoming this strong, capable, confident woman. And I also love how supportive Reese was with everything that she did, no matter what. The only thing I really didn't care for is the third act breakup. I gave this book 4.5 stars. The third act breakup in here was not my favorite. I'll just say that, I don't wanna spoil anything, but I only give books five stars if I loved every single aspect of the book. Even if there is a third act breakup, it needs to make sense for me and for me to be like, okay, that makes sense. Like that just didn't really happen in here for me, but that's okay. Trigger warning here for past familial abuse. Uh, tropes, you have age gap, bodyguard, different social classes, forbidden, forced proximity. They have to live together. He's her bodyguard, so they, live together they're like roommates uh great banter the i don't believe in love trope reese definitely does not believe in love so um i hate everyone but you reese in here uh, a possessive hero a protector and it's a royalty romance again i gave this book 4.5 out of 5 stars another great read was snow by sophie lark i'm very sorry rachel i think i was supposed to buddy read this with her last month and i didn't get to it until may um but it's okay 
it's fine. She knows that I'm like this sometimes. Like I just wasn't in the mood to read it right now. And I had a few other books I had to read. So I was like, Rachel, just go read it. I know you really want to read it. Go do it. I'm not going to stop you. I will read Snow eventually. <laughs> so I finally got to talk to her about Snow and I finished Snow. This is the second book in her Mafia Underworld series. What is the series called? Yeah, the Underworld series, number two. So I read Ivan, it's over there somewhere. Ivan does pop in in this book in one scene with his lady from the first book. And uh, I just love them so much, love them. Okay, so this one, this one is about Snow and Sasha. I think also I wanna mention all these books take place in Russia, at least so far, book one and two take place in Russia. Um, so. In this one, Sasha just graduated medical school and she goes back home to be with her family to figure out what she's gonna do with her life. She does not expect for her father to be indebted to the local mafia and the only way to get him out of it is to basically become a mafia doctor and be a part of this life for the next 20 years, like shackled to them for 20 years. And so she was not expecting to use her medical degree to help mob bosses, like was not on her docket, like at all. <laughs> One day she is called in to a job to patch up some fighters in an underground mafia fighting ring. Uh, that's where she meets Snow, who is one of the fighters who is very passionate about fighting and like underground fighting and stuff like that. And he is there to win everything. He's a very closed off man. And before he met Sasha, he had like absolutely nothing to fight for. Like he was just winning to win. But now he has this woman where he's like, I know what it means to fight for someone. Like he is full on obsessed with this woman and will do anything to save her from this lifestyle and protect her with every ounce of his being. <gasps> I really enjoyed this one. I loved like the fighting, underground fighting aspect. I thought that was so cool. This book did have me like on the edge of my seat once I finally read it. <laughs> Sorry, Rachel again. <laughs> And um, yeah, I was wanting to read it constantly. It was just so action packed. I feel like these books specifically are very action packed. I feel like because they're much shorter than her Brutal Birthright series, I think Sophia had to like condense a lot of it. So yeah, there's a lot going on in here. It gets pretty dark at times, so please be aware. I thought I would read one of my memorable quotes from this book because I do have a few, but I'll just read one of them. This one is from Snow's point of view. Do you know that I never loved anything before I loved you? I didn't know I had a heart at all until you made it beat. Now that heart belongs to you and you belong to me, me and nobody else. I'll kill every last one of them before I let them take you. I love me a possessive man. Okay, uh, trigger warning. There's, there's, there's a few. It's a darker mafia read. Okay, so you have fighting, blood, gore, death, dead bodies, sexual assault, murder. For tropes, you have a fighter, underground fighter, a doctor, forbidden, it's on Kindle Unlimited, it's a mafia romance, it's a sport romance, and it definitely has the touch her and die trope because someone touches her and he, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoyed this. I gave this four stars. Next, I had an impromptu buddy read with Melissa from Book Bar. We ended up picking up One Hot Italian Summer by Karina Halley. I really wanted to get into the summer mood and this cover just really intrigues me. I've seen a lot of my friends rave about this book, so I just had to pick it up. Our heroine here is from Edinburgh and she is kind of having Roger's block in a sense. She was a author duo, but her author partner ended up passing away recently. She doesn't really know how to write on her own anymore. Um, so her agent basically tells her, hey, I have this villa in Italy. No one's there right now. How about you go there and like get a change of scenery to hopefully spark up those writing juices, you know? And so the heroine's like, okay, let's go. She goes there and <laughs> she thinks she has this whole beautiful house to herself. And so she's, um, getting some tanning on, possibly with no clothes on, out in the back, and um, these two shadows walk up on her. She's like, what's going on? And um, it's a man and his son, and they just see her topless, and they're like, what are you doing in my house? The boy's like, "Like, what are you doing in my house? Like, he, is <laughs> he is not happy that this woman isn't wearing any clothes by his pool. Anyway, so long story short, the guy and the little boy are actually the agent's ex-husband and son. That's why heroine had no idea that they were gonna be there. So this is a romance between her and her agent's ex. Okay, there's a lot of drama going on in here. And I really enjoyed this one. I feel like this is a perfect beach read. You just wanna sit and soak up the sun and read this book. I think that's perfect. I really enjoyed both of these characters. There were, there were a little too many like cheese factors for me. 
in here. Like I just get really bad, cringy secondhand embarrassment. I get that a lot. And so I don't know, some of the lines in here were a little bit too cheesy for me, um, but that's okay. Everyone has their tastes. And then the conflict of this story just wasn't really my favorite, but I really did like the ending in here. Um, for tropes, you have an artist, the heroes, a sculptor, which was really cool. An author, the heroine is an author. Um, it's forbidden, forced proximity because they're staying in the house. Very memorable meet cute moment, I just described it. A uh, single dad, it's a summer read and it is set during a vacation. I gave this book four out of five stars. Next, I read a novella. I really have been loving Cara Bastone's books. I think I only have one more book to read from her, which is like the last book in like the Forever Yours series. And then I've read all of her books. The prequel to the Forever Yours series, book number 0.5 is When We First Met. So this is about Kat who lives across the hall from like this guy she thinks is super cute and she wants to like hook up with him. So she kind of at first befriends his roommate in order to get a little bit closer to him and get like the 411, the details on this guy. Um, so she spends a lot of time with his roommate. His name is Quentin. And then she starts realizing, I'm enjoying my time with Quentin way more than I am with this actual guy I thought I had a crush on. And she doesn't know that Quentin has been pining, pining for Kat this whole entire time. That's all I'm gonna leave you with because this is a novella, but I thought this was so cute. I love, I love when you get into a hero's head that he's just been pining after this woman for so long. Like I love getting into a man's head like that. <sighs> my favorite thing ever. Okay, so I thought this was super cute and Carabas Stone can do like, no oh, fuck my eyes. Uh, tropes, friends to lovers, pining, neighbors, it's a novella, and the heroine's also a teacher. So if you want to read about a teacher character, here you go. I gave this book four out of five stars. Next is a DNF for me. This is Time Born by Sarah Samuels. I just got like, I think 20%, a few chapters into the audiobook. I was very, very kindly gifted this audiobook arc. Um, from Forever and Always PR, which is Justin Tori's like audiobook, uh, like promotion company, um, which was super, super sweet and kind of them. This was like the first one they were doing. However, like this one just didn't really vibe well with me. I DNF'd it a few chapters in. I just couldn't get into it. And honestly, the writing style just was not my favorite. And um, I am a very seasoned fantasy, fantastical romance reader. I've read a lot of books with fantastic world building, like the best world building ever. And I felt like that needed to be developed a lot in here. And the heroine just was not my favorite and I didn't want to read any more about her in her point of view. So um, I unfortunately DNF'd it, but um, yeah, I feel really bad whenever I DNF a books, especially books that were like gifted to me, but um, I gotta stay tried and true. So I apologize. Then I ended up reading What He Always Knew by Candy Steiner. This is the second book in the best kept secrets duet and oh my gosh this duet literally I felt like my heart was racing the entire time I was reading these two books I read book one last month and like oh y'all like it <laughs> my heart was like beating out of my chest reading these books it stressed me out so much <laughs> if you don't know about this duet this is a love triangle duet our heroine has been having a rocky relationship with her husband and then her long lost first love first crush ends up moving back into town and working with her at the school she works at and things kind of blow up and like the whole duet is her like choosing between her husband and this lost love of her. I can't really say anything more than that. I don't really want to give my thoughts on this because like, I don't know, the only thing I can say is I like who she picked at the end. That's all I'm gonna say. That's who I was rooting for. I wanted that to happen. I didn't expect for me to want to root for this guy, but I did. And that's all I want to say. For tropes for this series, there's like a love triangle, marriage in trouble for one of the guys, and then the other guy is like workplace romance. So I gave this one four stars. The series overall for me is getting a four star. I haven't read book three yet. Let me know if I should. Like, please let me know what you think about book three, which is about the guy she didn't pick. And I ended up reading Disgrace by Brittany Cherry. This book blew up on TikTok uh, because of a TikTok Brittany made. And I was like, give me that yes please and i've just been seeing this book floating around and i had to pick it up also i just need to read more britney cherry because i love her anyway this one was very interesting this one starts out with grace moving out of her home with her ex-husband her she's getting a divorce from her husband she then moves back to her small church town and uh there she's kind of like family royalty 
Her family owns the church in town and her dad's the pastor there. Because her husband left her and cheated on her, she like, feels like she has no like purpose anymore. Like she doesn't really feel like herself. She's wondering who she is as a person now without this man in her life or without other people telling her what to do. She's like, I need to discover who I am as a person. And she realizes the only person in town that makes her feel alive is the town bad boy, Jackson. Jackson used to be an addict and his dad is dealing with alcoholism right now and he's just struggling really hard in his life and grace has become that shining light for him very reluctantly they're at first like butting heads like rams like they <laughs> do not get off on the right foot but then they slowly start to get to know one another physically and emotionally and they cannot help but totally fall head over heels in love with each other. But then things get a little complicated when people in this town like don't want them to be together. So they're kind of like intervening in their relationship, which is a no-no, obviously. <laughs> I thought this book was super immersive. I read it, I think, all in one day. The audiobook is really good. If you haven't read the audiobook, you need to. I love seeing these two characters fall in love with each other. I thought it was a beautiful story, especially that epilogue. Oh, I loved it, like the ending scene. I loved that. Um, my only issue was like the town drama I felt like was just a little bit too much for me, felt a little soap opera-y, you know? And so I just felt like it was a little bit over the top and yeah, personal preference again, so. For chore growings in here, you have a few. Um, you have panic attacks, a miscarriage uh, recounted like in the past, our heroine. She thought one of the reasons why her husband left her is because um, she had a miscarriage seven times she's had seven babies that have miscarried and oh that part was absolutely tragic like reading about that broke my heart but I loved Jackson's like oh the way he comforted her when she was like being vulnerable and talking about her experience like oh I loved that so much you have a book lovers romance both of them love reading books there's this bookshop in town and they leave each other books in this bookshop to like read and they leave sticky notes on it it was so cute you have a brooding hero it's forbidden it's on kindle unlimited you have like a rivaling families romance their families do not get along and it is a small town romance i gave this book four out of five stars then i ended up picking up hearts prisoner by olivia riley this is the first book in the dark world mates alien romance series now, I tried to read this book years ago, two years ago maybe, um, because one of my lovely followers, she's been with me like for forever, Ashton, she recommended this book and I was like, ooh, let me pick it up. And I just couldn't get into it. I think it was third person alien romance and it was an ebook. Like it just was not vibing well with me. But then I was scrolling on Audible Plus and I saw that the audiobook is on Audible Plus. And I was like, let's give this another try, another shot. I really want to see if I like this and audiobooks definitely vibe better for me. Before I get into the summary of this book, I do want to mention the audiobook for this is the way to go. Is the way to go. Okay. I really enjoyed this book and I never would have picked it up if it wasn't on audio because it just was not vibing well with me reading it as an ebook. So if you have Audible, this book is free to listen to, so go pick it up. This is the romance between Dr. Lana Hart and Zira. So Dr. Lana Hart has been hired to work on this underground, like secure space station that humans run to research other alien creatures. And so she's been hired to do a study and get to know and learn more about like one of the most dangerous aliens on the station. His name is Zerus. And man, he like throws her for a loop. He's unlike anything she's ever seen. He's dangerous to the extreme. He's run off and chased off every other scientist that has like worked with him. But then when he sees Awana, like everything changes. He's, his heart basically started softening for this human doctor. Like I really enjoyed it. Like it's kind of captor captor bromance, but not really cause she didn't capture him, but he's in a cell the entire time like they're talking and are with each other. I really just love this dynamic. There's like two major parts to it when he's locked up and then what happens after he's locked up. There are parts of the plot line too that just left me shocked. I don't get shocked a lot when I read books because I read romance books for the predictability of it because I like predictability. I like it. it it keeps me settled, okay? So I was really shocked with all of the shocking moments in here. I was like, whoa, I was not expecting that at all, which is good. In books, in romance books, I do want to be surprised at points. I do want to be shocked at points because it just 
leaves things a little bit more exciting. So I really, really loved the way Olivia Riley did that. I also really did love her writing, listening to it this time. And I really hope to get into the other books in the series. I don't know if they're on Audible Plus. I don't think they are, but I think you can only get the audiobooks off of Audible, like they're Audible exclusive books. The only thing I felt like was missing was more development in the romance between the two of them. I didn't really believe that they were in love by the end of this book. I just didn't. I was like, oh, okay, they care for each other. I didn't feel that love. So it was like that part was okay. Like the plot in here was really good for me and their development of getting to know each other and starting their relationship, top notch. But by the end, I was like, I don't feel love. You know, like I don't feel like the absolutely fallen in love with this person. So um, for that reason, I'm giving it four stars. Um, for trigger warnings, you have death, gore, sickness, blood, bombs, and guns. Tropes, you have alien romance. I hate everyone but you. That would be Zerus. Um, it's on Kindle Unlimited. It's also on Audible Plus. It's slow burn and definitely has the touch her and die trope in here. The last book for this video, the book that I've recently read, is my favorite. <laughs> this is Lady Ruthless by Scarlett Scott. Five freaking stars for me. So good. This one's also on Audible Plus. So if you have Audible, this book is free to listen to. So go for it. This is the first book in the Notorious Ladies of London series. And I didn't know this until I got like 50% of the way through this book. This is actually a spinoff series to the League of Dukes series. That's that whole like six, seven book series that I've read by Scarlett Scott. And basically the hero from the last book, Fearless Duke, has a sister. This is her romance. So Oh, I love this book so much. So one thing I love, love about Scarlett Scott's books is she starts out every single one of her books in the middle of a scene. Like, I love that. Like in the middle of something, in the middle of an occurrence. Like that's how her books start out. This book starts out with our hero in here kidnapping the heroine. And then you have to learn throughout the book, why is he kidnapping her? What is going on? So I love her storylines so much because of that. Like it completely grips you right from the get-go. From the get-go, I was like, this book is gonna be a favorite. I am in love already. I've been wanting to pick up a historical that is absolutely fantastic, memorable, amazing, gave me the same vibes as Queen Charlotte did because I'm obsessed, okay? And I thought this was a great book to pick up after watching Queen Charlotte. It doesn't really have anything like the same vibes it does in certain aspects, but it's not like the same plot line whatsoever, but it gave some of those vibes that I was wanting. Like, like the couple at first, like do not like each other. They cannot stand each other. This is like one of the most epic enemies to lovers romances ever. Like they are true enemies in here. And then I'll get into in a second, another reason why it reminded me of Bridgerton in certain aspects. So anyway, the book starts out with the hero in here. His name is Sin or Lord Sinclair, kidnapping our heroine in here, Lady Callie. He's kidnapping her for revenge. No one knows this, but Lady Callie is the secret writer to the scandals of Lord Sin. It's like an article paper that is sold to the public weekly. And it's basically telling the tale and writing, telling the story of uh, Lord Sin being this dangerous man who murders people and has rendezvous with women. And people have associated with it with the real Sin. And he is pissed. He's like, this writer has ruined my reputation. I cannot get remarried. My previous wife like squandered all of our fortune and I need to remarry in order to have a better life for my mother who is sick. And so he is so pissed and so angry because everyone thinks he's a murderer now. So he tracks down who the writer is and it is Lady Callie. She has started writing these articles because she is convinced that Lord Sin killed her brother. This is her revenge. That was her revenge, basically becoming Lady Whistledown. So this is like if Lady Whistledown wrote like her her pages just about one man and then that man kidnapped her <laughs> and forced her to marry him for revenge. Like So yeah, he kidnaps her and wants her to marry him for revenge. And for other reasons, she also has a large dowry. And he's like, okay, well, you owe me. You ruined like my whole life and I need this money. You're gonna marry me. It's so good and I need you to read it. I need everyone to read it. It has a lot of tropes that I absolutely love. Okay, 
It has the author slash writer trope. The heroine is the writer, obviously. Capture captive, a tortured hero, forced marriage, fantastic banter, enemies to lovers. Um, historical romance, if you like this, read this. I put Bridgerton because it has those Lady Whistledown vibes. Like, I really enjoyed that part in here. Um, you have the kidnapping trope, married couple. There's a one bed scene that I loved. It's when she's first kidnapped and he has to tie her to the bed. Mm, yeah, there's a revenge plot line, obviously. Uh, and I would say you have like a villain trope because he definitely acts and feels like a villain. And then you have a widower in here as well. Again, needless to say, I love this book. Five stars. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all the books that I've read so far in May. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a lion emoji in the comment section down below. I don't know why that popped into my head, but it did. <laughs> Anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.